When I first began, I researched the most iconic silent film stars of the 1920s, male and female. I got the basic idea of the makeup look that I wanted to be doing for both Abigail and Joan. After this, I experimented with the makeup to achieve the right look for Abigail. Thin, expressive eyebrows, dark eyes, and a red lip. Her red lipstick was intended to serve as a Brechtian symbol for her corruption and to be striking on camera. John Proctor's makeup was much simpler. I needed to darken his natural eyebrows and give him a thin moustache. After I had finished the makeup look that I wanted to achieve for both characters, I began experimenting with the grey skin tone, which proved to be a difficult process. I first started by using a white cake and black cake face paint, and mixing them together to create a grey. After this, I experimented by painting on myself and other people. But because I, the white cake had a pearl finish, the colour was far too silver and dried with a bluish tint. I assumed that it was the paint I was using that was making it problematic, so I bought a different brand, a liquid body paint and an opaque cake finish paint. Immediately, the, bo the body paint was a better colour. It was flatter and looked more realistic, but it still dried with a blue tint. Um, the issue with it was it was too blue and we need to make it more, it needs to be more of like a black, straight, paint, grey kind of look. We've learnt that it's too blue. It's very, it, it's very silver. And silver's not what we're going for. Okay, so we'll either try different makeup or move away. After talking to the owner of the costume shop that I bought the paint from, she suggested that I experiment with undertones like yellows or pinks in the paint or under the paint to see if it would affect the colour change when it dried. After all this experimentation, I found that the best method, however, was to use a ratio of one part black to every eight parts white, and then to dilute the paint with water so that it was slightly transparent and the skin could, be, could just be seen underneath. I then set the paint with baby powder to lighten it when it dried. For the hair, I decided to slick John's hair back with a side part, as that was the most pop common hairstyle of the time for men. For Abigail, I knew that I wanted to give her a faux bob because she had been transformed into a flower girl. I decided to give her curly hair to make the faux bob look more realistic, and I also wanted to accentuate the S curl that was popular at the time. It took a lot of, it took a lot of practice to get the S curl to lay properly, but when I was pleased with how it turned out and how effective the overall look was when the actors were performing. At the start of my costume design process, I researched different fashion styles of the 1920s. The two main looks I drew inspiration from were the flapper style and the classic, more modest style of dresses featuring higher necklines, dropped waistlines and modest fits. When designing Abigail's costume, I decided that I wanted to create a blend of the two influences to symbolise Abigail's modest exterior whilst also alluding to her promiscuity and sex appeal. To do this, I layered a black knee-length flapper dress underneath a black blouse with bell sleeves. The bottom of the blouse fell on the hips making the outfit shapeless and modest, but the v-neckline of the blouse the and the flapper aspect of the dress, as well as the inclusion of stay-up stockings, implemented an equal balance of debauchery in the outfit. In terms of props included in Abigail's costume, I purchased a 1920s style long cigarette holder and fake cigarette for Abigail to smoke on stage. The cigarette holder was a long black rod with a white mouthpiece and a silver end, somewhat resembling a magic wand as a nod to the original context of the play. I decided to dress John in a classic black suit to demonstrate his class, modesty and somewhat traditional values, but decided not to include a tie as a way of alluding to John as being somewhat of a subtle nonconformist. Dressing John in a shirt that was slightly unbuttoned also was a choice made to symbolise his own promiscuity and indiscretions. Both John and Abigail's costumes had to be black and white to fit with the black and white colour theme of the scene. John carried a red handkerchief in his pocket that was used as a prop during the scene to wipe a lipstick mark off of his cheek. These two red features in an otherwise black and white scene served as a Brechtian way of symbolising lust, passion and impurity in both of the characters. When considering the props used on stage, we again had to ensure that any items included in the scene were black, white or grey. This meant painting the label of our prop gin bottle black and purchasing a cigarette holder and fake cigarette that featured no other colours. We purchased two glass tumblers that were used on stage and resembled ones relevant of the time period. The inclusion of alcohol and tobacco in the scene was intended to highlight the flawed nature of the characters, as well as subtly indicate both Abigail and John's need for a new vice since their affair has ended.